27 and 17 run with the complimentary plays here on the video report over the past month with two more NBA selections coming your way in just a moment. Both games with implications for the Eastern Conference playoff seedings with the NBA regular season winding down here in those games tonight. I'm going to be previewing the Nets Knicks and the Celtics Pacers. Plus a quick check of who's hot and who's not coming up in just a moment. Hi everyone, Al DeMarco here, and this of course is going to be your Wednesday video report. Listen guys, you know I've told you in the past that I'm a news junkie, former reporter, I'm never going to break that habit, okay? But I probably check out online at least 15 to 20 newspapers on a casual basis every single day. And of course as I'm handicapping games, I'm of course immediately going to the local papers for the teams that I happen to be considering for games to gamble on and release his picks here at the site on a daily basis as well. And the reason why, as I've mentioned before, is that beat writers are my eyes and ears because nobody knows more about the teams than the guys that are covering it on a day-in, day-out basis. Well, of course, the coaches do, but we ain't talking about the coaches and they're not divulging any information. You know what I mean? So I'm using those guys who cover the team. And often in their stories, whether they're advanced stories or their days, their stories prior to a particular game, you know, they often provide little tidbits that really give me an insight into the teams that lead me one way or another to either bet on them or to simply pass on that particular game. But at this time of year, I find that's even something more interesting because, yes, we've got that little thing called the Final Four coming up this weekend. We've got all the various players you see declaring for the NBA draft here in a few months. But it's the coaching carousel, and it's amazing how everybody has a different flavor of the month. Let me use University of Texas and the University of Tennessee. I mean, you know, Rick Barnes, well, that flavor wasn't working anymore in Austin. Their athletic director, Steve Patterson, if you believe the reports, wanted Barnes to go ahead and make some coaching changes to his staff. Barnes didn't want to, and boom, Barnes is pushed out, you know. Uh, one way or another he's pushed out of Austin or he voluntarily leaves. Aren't they the same exact thing really in this particular case? You really know, never know what the exact story is. But Barnes decides to leave in less than 48 hours. University of Tennessee scoops him right out. He goes from one UT to another UT, okay? But in Knoxville, he is the flavor of the month. He is exactly what that volunteers program needed. A winning coach with a sterling reputation who brings a sense of stability to Rocky Top for a coaching carousel that has been nonstop turning around with uh, the, the Tennessee Volunteers men's basketball program. But that leaves the vacancy at UT. Now, if you believe the reports from various sources today, UT, Steve Patterson, their athletic director, has apparently zeroed in on VCU Shock of Smart. Well, gee, like that's a no-brainer, right? But what a great hire that would be. You've got Smart, who really has done an exceptional job at VCU. But is he ever going to win a national title at VCU? Really? I mean, how much further can you go with the Rams, okay? Done a great job. One of the youngest coaches, if not the youngest, in Division I ball at 37 years old. My goodness, if the University of Texas can bring in a guy with that reputation, with that youth on his side, into a recruiting hotbed that is Texas, Oh my goodness, what he could do with that program. Uh, uh, Reestablishing its dominance, perhaps bringing it to heights that it has never reached before. I mean, you got a recruiting hotbed in the, in the state of Texas. You got Oklahoma right over here. You got Louisiana right over there. You've got so much talent there to pull from. It would be a great hire. But then again, you know, I also look at the University of Texas when they went out and got Charlie Strong, another young guy with a great reputation to take over the football program. Difference is, you know, when you're the Longhorns football coach, you got to have a personality. And I don't know, man. I mean, I looked at that and I'm wondering, it was a head scratcher last year, and I'm thinking, okay, you went and got Charlie Strong. What did he do at Louisville to really show you that he could take over a Texas program, one of the most scrutinized programs when it comes to big-time college football? in the country. Does he have the personality to do it? Can he have the ability to recruit enough key players at key positions? And we're talking quarterback here, okay? To make this program a success. Listen, the jury is still out. You know, last year he's basically playing with Mac Brown's players, but it'll be interesting to see how that program, the football program, goes. But of course, if the basketball program gets Shaka Smart, I'm telling you, it's only going to go up. But at the same time, then you see St. John's yesterday. Chris Mullen is going to become their new head coach. Interesting hire. I mean, listen, 
you talk St. John's basketball, you're talking about Chris Mullen. I mean, you're harking back to an era where he was the guy for the Red Storm back in the day. But you aren't recruiting players my age that remember that or older. You're recruiting their sons or their grandchildren. Does Chris Mullen have any relevance other than, hey, we brought back a star. Now, Steve Lavin didn't get the job done at St. John's. Good recruiter. Never really was able to get the recruiting talent that he brought in to mesh and to develop in anything. This year's team was just such a disappointment, despite all the talent he had there. But, you know, Chris Mullen is not like Larry Brown, who can say, hey, I won a national championship at UCLA, or at, uh, was it UCLA? Kansas. Pfft, can't even remember now. Uh, hey, I won an NBA championship with the Detroit Pistons. You know, you're going to bring in an older guy. Kids will certainly be impressed by that hardware on your fingers. But Chris Mullen, yeah, I was an NBA executive. I was a star here. So anyway, just my little observations. I just find it kind of interesting. What is the flavor that a particular athletic director or a particular university is in love with on a particular spotlight on certain teams? Um, listen, a couple of handicappers here. Gabriel DuPont, who has made uh, $10 betters uh, over $16,000 since late November, has his first 80-dime play of the NBA season going today, and you can get it for half price by using coupon code HALF. It's on the Celtics and the Pacers, twice as strong as his third 40-dime winner in three days last night with Miami, Florida, upsetting Temple in the NIT semifinals. Also, Scott Delaney, 60-dime uh, college winner, number six out of seven, game two of the CBI tournament finals. Remember, that's best of three tournament uh, between Loyola of Chicago and UL Monroe. You can get the play for just $19, saving $80 in the process by using coupon code SCOTT19. The significance of it being a 60-dimer is this, Scott with his 50-dime plays or higher. The past four years in all sports combined has made $10 betters a little over $40,000. All the other coupons, et cetera, over on the homepage. Let's talk about a couple of uh, games here. Listen, I was on the wrong side of yesterday's complimentary play, and I told you I was, a, I was in a quandary. I didn't really know which way to go. I took a shot with the Pacers against the Nets. Ah, big mistake there. Let me rectify that error and go with Brooklyn tonight, a red-hot Brooklyn team that is currently sitting in the eighth and final playoff spot in the Eastern Conference, a half a game ahead of the Celtics, who are hosting the Pacers tonight, one and a half games ahead of the Pacers, whom they beat last night, and two uh, ahead of Charlotte. Hell, they're just a half game behind number seven Miami right now. The Brooklyn Nets, given up for dead a month and a half ago, suddenly could be a number six seed in the East. How scary is that? Or perhaps the scary part is that the Eastern Conference is that bad that the Nets could make that move. But really, the key to the Nets' success, as I mentioned in yesterday's video report, has been the uh, play of Brooke Lopez, who has just been playing some great ball here. Uh, Lopez, 3-0, um, and the Nets are against the Knicks this season. And in those three games, Lopez has averaged almost 22 points, nearly nine rebounds, and over three blocks a game. Last seven games, he's averaged 28 points and almost 10 rebounds a game. I'm going to go with them here tonight, the Nets, who have won four in a row, eight out of ten. And why not? I mean, the Knicks have lost seven straight games, going one and six against the spread in this particular stretch. They have not scored more than 92 points in any of those games. Uh, in fact, they're averaging just 85.1 points and shooting like under 35% from the field, I think, in that stretch. I mean, they've just been a horror show. So I'll go ahead and lay the 10 points with Brooklyn in this particular contest. Now, Boston is coming off a uh, big win at Charlotte a couple of nights ago, 116-104 to 104, uh, as a three-point underdog. Uh, they're back at home tonight taking on the Pacers, who last night lost 111-106 to 106 at Brooklyn. You know, they took a 7-0 lead in that game. And then the next thing you knew, end of the first quarter, they're down 33-15. They came back again in the second quarter. Then they're down by three points at halftime. Had another surge in the third quarter. Still lost the damn game. They have lost eight of their last ten games straight up. They are 3-7-1 and one against the spread in their last 11 games. And ironically, that 2-8 uh, and eight skid straight up started with a 93-83 home loss to guess who? the Boston Celtics, when they were an eight-and-a-half-point favorite back on March 14th. Uh, C.J. Miles got hurt last night in the first quarter for the Pacers. He's been playing some very good ball here. He may not be available tonight. Uh, Pacers defense, what defense? They've given up almost 110 points 
in their last six games. Uh, I got to go with the uh, Celtics here playing at home in this one, minus the four points as your other complimentary play to go along with the Brooklyn Nets. That'll do it, guys. Best of luck to you all, and I'll catch you again tomorrow when we do this one more time.